something that will overcome Oh, I'm gonna shine like the battle's won Fall back, devil, cause your time is up Oh, I'm gonna live like the stone is gone everyone, thank you so much for joining with us this morning at Ocean View Online. You know, I'm really excited about this time in our church. We're in a series right now called Now What? And last week, we heard from Pastor Terry some really practical ideas and tips of how we could hear from God just by reading His Word. Today, we're going to discover another foundational truth that I think if we can harness is really going to help us in our walk with God and in living at our faith with other people. You know, this time, this season that we are in has helped us see a lot of need in our community and we have been able to meet a big need in our community. And I'm so proud of you, our church. I'm so proud and thankful for you in your giving and your contribution for us to be able to meet those needs. You know, last week we were able to gather together just a handful of volunteers while practicing some social distancing and we were able to pack almost 1,000 bags of food that was then distributed the next day to families and kids in our community who desperately needed that. So I'm so proud of us for being able to do that. And that's just one example of the many needs that we as a church and you as individuals have been meeting. So I wanna just remind you that if you have a need during this time, or if you're able and willing to meet a need during this time, I encourage you to go to our website, ovbc.org, scroll down just a bit and you'll see two forms there of how you can get involved to meet a need or how you can let us know if you have a need. I'd also like to remind you that you can download the YouVersion Bible app before Pastor Terry gets started. You can follow along with his message right there and read along in God's Word with us. If you haven't done that, take this opportunity to download that now. We're going to continue worshiping as we prepare our hearts to hear from God's Word this morning.
Good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you this morning as we continue this online experience. I hope you have your cup of coffee. I hope that you have a little bit of margin to be able to kind of tune in for a short amount of time this morning uh, because what we're about to share is going to continue to improve, I promise, improve your life. Now, I know you've heard that before in a lot of uh, self-help books and a lot of areas where they say, if you do this, it'll make a better life. But I promise you, because Jesus actually talks about it, he actually encourages us that if we follow some of the things we're going to talk about today, it will literally improve your life today. Let me give you a case in point. One of the things I'm thankful for uh, in the midst of this crisis and being at home a lot more than we usually are, is I've been able to get a lot of home projects done that I've been wanting to for a very long time. Uh, but I, I was focusing on one, and, and I was literally kicking myself, because let me share this. For years, there has been a, a part of my yard that uh, has been a little drier and a little browner than other areas of my yard. Um, and so after investigating over the years, and I, I realized one of my sprinkler heads uh, was not functioning the way that it should, that it wasn't rotating as fast as it should, and so the coverage wasn't there. It was getting brown, and so I knew what the problem was, and I knew that I needed to replace that sprinkler head, but I thought to myself, well, it's probably got a lot involved. It's probably going to take a lot of time. I got to make sure that I have hours of time to put in. I got I to research. It's going to take too much. It's too much of a hassle, and so I just lived with the problem. I lived with my yard having an area that didn't look as good as the other, and so finally I thought, well, I've got time. So I thought to myself, let me, let me dive in and let me, let me really pour some energy into this. And here's the truth. It took me about 15 minutes to figure out how to dig out the sprinkler head. It took me another 20 minutes to replace the sprinkler head. And then it took me literally two minutes to turn it on and to see a brand new sprinkler head fixing a problem I've had for years. And I kicked myself because I said, have I really been living with my yard looking like this for so many years when it could have literally taken me 30 minutes to fix the problem? It was so simple. Why didn't I do this before? Why didn't I improve my yard earlier? And I, I think in our spiritual lives, there are many of us that are struggling in our relationship with God because we think there is so much involved, there's so much that I have to do, it's just so much unknown and so difficult to undertake that I just am going to live with the type of relationship I have with God the way it is now. And even though I want to improve it, I just don't know how or I don't know what it takes, so I'm just going to live the life that I'm leading today. Well, today, I pray that you tune in for the next 20 minutes because we will talk about a very simple way for you to have a better life. In fact, let me unpack this. because We're talking about what it means to talk to God today. And if you learn to pray to God, you will have a better life. Now, let me, let me say this differently, because right off the bat, when I said the word pray, I think a lot of us say, oh, Terry, you know, I, I've tried this before. I, I, I'm, I'm afraid of this. I, I don't know how to pray right. I mean, do you get on your knees? Do you open your eyes? Do you close your eyes? Do you hold your hand up? Uh, you know, is there a time of the day? You know what? It's too complicated. There's too much involved with it. So uh, you, right off the bat, you, you say, I have to learn to pray. Yeah, I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt. I'm not doing it. Let me replace pray with talk to God. That if you learn to talk to God, you will have a better life. And this is really important. Because let me share something that Jesus, who is God, shared with his people. He actually shared the way in which we're to talk to him. And today, I'm going to show you not only what he said, but I'm going to show you four quick prayers that Jesus prayed. And it'll teach us how simple it is to be able to talk to God whenever we want to talk to to him. So we're going to go into a passage of scripture in the book of Matthew. And this is Jesus, and he's going to illustrate a very famous prayer that most of us have probably heard before, no matter what denomination you're a part of, you've heard this prayer. Let's take a look. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 13. It says this, this then is how you should pray. This is Jesus. This is how you should talk to God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. What's amazing about this prayer is, right off the bat, a lot of you are like, you know, Terry, I've heard that before, but I don't understand it. Well, let me unpack this very simply. And we're going to unpack the four different ways that Jesus wants us to talk to him about. And the first thing that when we talk to God that I want you to remember is this. Remember who you're talking to. Just remember who you're talking to. Let, let me show you this. Jesus actually illustrates this. I want you to see Jesus praying to his father and how he prays to his father. Take a look at this. This is in that same book. It says, at that time, Jesus prayed this prayer. He talked to his father. O oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you. Thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do this this way. Let me unpack this for you. This is amazing. The first thing is we're to remember who we're talking to. Remember who God is. And Jesus pauses in a moment and says, you're God. You have the best interest for my life. You have the best plan. You have the best way. You are the provider for me. And so the, Jesus says to us, the first thing you should do is thank him. When you talk to God, just remember who he is. And to thank him for all that he's done for our lives. You know, later on in the Bible, Paul actually says this, is, is always be joyful and never stop praying. Always be joyful. And Jesus basically says, remember who you're talking to. Be thankful when you approach God. Now, here's the truth. I think some of us, when we think about praying, we get a little skittish. Because I don't know if you're like me, but this is me growing up. I was afraid to pray. I didn't even want to touch prayer. I didn't want to go close to prayer. And here's why. It's because when I started to focus and talk to God, I always felt he was mad at me. I always felt I didn't measure up. I always felt like why would he want to talk to me? I, I've made so many mistakes. I'm not perfect. I'm human. I don't read the Bible as much. I don't go to church as much as I should. So God's got to be mad at me. And so I, I don't even want to approach him. But I want to remind you, Jesus actually tells us, when you approach God, thank him for who he is, which means that God's approachable. Don't miss this. Jesus Christ was God. And when he taught the people. And when he shared that prayer, he basically was telling you and I, hey, Terry, I'm God, and right now I want you to know how important talking to me is. In fact, I so desire relationship with you, and I so want to talk to you, that I'm going to show you different ways that you can talk to me. That's how much God wants our attention and our relationship, is that he actually took time on this earth as God, to teach us how to pray. So the first thing that I would say to all of us as we think about, all right, how do I approach God and how do I talk to God, is remember that we're not approaching an angry God. We're approaching a God who has the best interests for our lives here and also desires that relationship. So the next time you think about praying, I want you to imagine going to God and God smiling because he's so excited to hear from you. There's a second aspect to prayer and Jesus actually illustrates this and, um, and it's really important because as we want to deepen our relationship with God, sometimes we need to get some things off our chest. And the second thing that you need to remember is you need to get it off your chest. There are things that are bugging you right now during this crisis. There are some of you who have lost hope. There are some of you that are angry. We see right now, this week, we see people getting out of their homes and protesting all around the country, mad at their leaders, mad at, at their situation. They're dealing with financial stress. They're dealing with family stress. And so sometimes we're not happy with God. We're not happy with our life. And so you might be sitting there saying, Terry, I don't want to pray because... I'm not happy with God. Why would I want to talk to him? And you know what Jesus actually illustrates? He says, you know what? It's okay to come to God when you're mad. It's okay to be angry. It's okay when you're disconnected with him. And so let me illustrate this. Jesus actually 
in a prayer, said this. This is Matthew, again, chapter 6. He says, forgive us our sins. Now, don't miss this. This is God, Jesus, and he's praying to his Father, God the Father, and he says, forgive us our sins. This is how we should pray. And so, in other words, he's saying, look, there are going to be times you're going to be mad at God, even though God has your best interests, even though God is the author and God gives you everything you have and he blesses you far more than you'll ever realize and you're going to be mad at him for a situation that really is not on him and it's okay, but I don't want you to not go to him with it. And so Jesus says if you're mad, if you're upset, if you're frustrated, talk to him. And so sometimes you need to get things off your chest. You know, I think part of the reason why we run away from God when we feel like we, we're not connected with him or feel like he might be mad at us or we're mad at him is I think we've confused prayer. Now, if, if you tune out the rest of this message, that's fine, but please hear this. I think sometimes we've confused what prayer is about and what talking to God is about. We think that talking to God is all about what we need. And so let me ask this question. When did prayer stop being relational and when did it start being transactional? You see, when Jesus was teaching about prayer, it had nothing to do about getting what you want. That's not prayer. Do you know that praying is actually about the relationship with God? Prayer is not about the transaction. It's about the interaction with God. And so maybe today you've been struggling in your prayer life because you haven't gotten the things, the relationship, the job, the resources that you've wanted, and you've attached that to your prayer life. I want to remind you, prayer has nothing to do about a transaction. It has everything to do about your interaction with with God. You see, when you're in marriage and when there's a disconnect between husband and wife, when you open your heart and you share your heart, it connects you as a couple. The same thing applies to our relationship with God. Sharing your heart will connect you to his. So maybe the most important thing that you need to do as you talk to God today is maybe you need to open your heart Maybe you need to focus on the relationship with God as opposed to the transaction of God. Here's what I do know. God is desiring relationship, but he also cares about the desires and the needs of our life. So maybe if you drop the transaction and if you focus on the interaction, it might just be that God honors the desires of your heart. Here's a third aspect to prayer as we learn what it means to talk to God. The truth is, is from time to time, we need to remember and we need to thank him for all that he does. We need to thank him. You know, there are times when I take the credit for my accomplishments. There are times that I take the credit for the home that I have, for the family that I have. But if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, here's what we know. My home is not my home. My resources are not my resources. My child is not my child. They all come from God. And so on a daily basis, when I interact with him, when I know who I'm talking to, when I can get things off my chest and we can be connected, I'm right away reminded in my conversation of how thankful I am to have the God of the universe who desires relationship with me. And Jesus actually illustrates thanking the Father for who he is. I want to point this out in John 11, 41 and 42. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe that you sent me. Let, me. let me explain this. Jesus was about to perform a miracle on earth. And as he was standing there, he illustrated to us the importance of connection with his Father. 
And so he stopped. He was God, and he could have easily performed the miracle right then and there in front of everybody. But he knew the hearts of the people standing there, that they would point to Jesus on earth and not understand that it came from God the Father. So here's what Jesus did. He stopped, and he said, you know what? I need to make sure that my heart's in the right place, and I want to make sure that everybody around here knows what is really happening. That this act that I'm about to perform has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with my Father. That when you stop and when you thank God and when you talk to God and you thank Him, here's the truth. Thanking God says more about you than it does about God. That when you stop and when you understand where all good things come from, it says a lot about your heart. It says a lot about who you are. And here's the great thing about that. When you pause and you give thanks to God on a daily basis, here's one thing that I've realized in my life. It gives you perspective. It gives others perspective. If you're struggling with hope right now, which I'm sure a lot of us are, maybe you're not a Christian, and maybe right now you've lost your hope because you have no idea how you're going to make it over the next two to three months. Let me give you some good news. Our God is the author of hope. Our God makes ways where there are no ways. And if you would today even if you turn this computer off or your TV off right now, and if you just turn and you talk to God and you say, God, thank you for all that I have, I promise you it will begin to give you a hope that you never dreamed possible. Here's the last aspect of prayer and one way that we can learn to talk to God. And it's number four. You need to think outside of yourself. You know, we already talked about that prayer is not necessarily about the transaction. And Jesus, in that famous prayer that we read earlier, he talks specifically about different ways that we're praying. And he, and he begins to pray these prayers that we've been going through. And the, the last type of prayer that Jesus prayed is one that should be dear to our hearts because it has nothing to do with us. Let me illustrate this. This is from Luke chapter 23. Jesus on the cross said this, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Jesus Christ is dying on a cross. Jesus Christ is in an enormous amount of pain. And he looks up to his heavenly Father. And instead of thinking about himself. He reminds all of us that it's not about us. That his mission, his plan was not about himself. It was about his people. And so he says, Father, forgive them. Forget my needs. Forget where I'm at. I'm God. I could jump off this cross right now. You're my father. You could do whatever you want and you could have me off this cross. But God, right now, in the midst of pain and suffering, my thoughts are with your people. And it reminds us that as Christians, as followers of Jesus, or those of you that might be interested in starting a relationship with God, that our perspective at times needs to be outside of ourselves and thinking of others. Because there's benefits to that. I love the quote by Rick Warren in the 40 Days of Purpose, and here's what he said. It's not about you. If you could start off life every day, I don't care whether you're a Christian or not, but if you could start off life and if you could wake up in the morning and you could talk to God and say, God, thank you for who you are and this morning I'm reminded that it's not about me. If you could do that, I promise you you'll have a better life. I promise you you'll have more success. I promise you'll be better in your family. If you could just remember, it's not about you. And Jesus Christ reminds us in our prayer life, it's not about you all the time. It's not about your needs all the time. It's not about your family all the time. You know what? There is a whole lot of other families and a whole lot of other people that need your prayers. And here's the truth. Praying for others deepens your perspective and grows your appreciation for who God is. That when you can pause and when you can pray for others, it gives you a greater perspective, greater appreciation, 
And maybe what you think you need, you don't. And maybe the hope that you're desiring, and if if I could just get this, it'll give me hope. And if I could just get that, it'll give me hope. Maybe those things that you want have nothing to do with your hope. Maybe if you think outside of yourselves and you start praying for others and you start meeting others' needs, maybe that gives you the hope that you desire. I want to close just with a couple of things, and and I want to remind you of this. I was talking with our staff before we recorded this, and I was talking to them about this, and I want you to hear me. Isn't it amazing that Jesus took a moment on earth to teach you and I about how desperately he desires to talk to you? Why should you pray? Because God wants relationship. Jesus taught about it so we could approach him. And for some of you, you might not talk to God because you're afraid of how God thinks of you. You don't know how to talk to God. You're afraid you're going to do it wrong. Don't be like me and for years ignore a place of your life that could be better. It takes just a couple of minutes today to have a better spiritual life. And if you've been complaining that, or if you've been thinking in your heart, I want a better relationship with God, or I want a better life, or I want a better outcome, then just a couple of minutes today can get you to your desire. That's all it takes. We talked last week about a challenge, and many of you around our community have taken that challenge on, where every day you're getting something that one of our spiritual heroes, whether it be Jesus, whether it be Paul, one of the saints they say in Scripture, and we text that to you. And then as you think about that and read that and ponder that, we also share just a word of insight about that Scripture. It just takes a couple of minutes for you to do a day, but it will connect you to our Father, and it allow you to interact with Him like you've never done before. Here's how you can do it, and I want to encourage you to join us. It's called the Now What Challenge, And we want you to text the word follower to 77222. And once you get that text in the morning, I want you to do three things. I want you to read, I want you to think about it, and then I want you to act. I want you to apply it to your life. And as you do, let's apply something we learned today. Let's talk to God about it. Let's actually have a conversation. Let's actually say something like, and for those of you who don't know how, God, thank you for that. I don't understand much of it. But that one part right there, I got that. And today, I'm going to try to do that. Thank you for the wisdom you've given me today. That's it. That's all you have to do to talk to God. And watch what Jesus says at the end of this whole message about praying and talking to God. Watch what he says that we will gain if we spend time interacting with him. This comes from Matthew chapter 11. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. If you want that burden lifted off your shoulders, if you want hope right now, if you want joy and peace, the way to that type of life is just a couple of minutes every day of recognizing who he is, thanking him for who he is, opening your heart to who he is, and thinking outside of yourself. And if you'll do that, Jesus says, come those of you that are weary and I will give you rest. If you learn to pray to God, you will have a better life. Would you pray with me? God, thank you so much that you paused to teach about prayer because you desired deep interaction with everyone 
God, I pray right now for the individual who's watching their TV screen or watching their computer screen, and right now they've heard all this, but they have attempted to pray before and they failed or they feel like a failure. God, I pray for them right now. I pray that they would not turn away from what you've told them today. I pray that they would realize that they could have a deeper spiritual life and a better life if they would just take a moment and talk to you. So God, in this moment right now, I pray for all the people who are about to talk to you, I pray that they would find the peace and that those that are weary, that they would find rest. So God, thank you so much for this very practical message. Thank you that you want relationship with us. And we pray that you would receive all the glory from what we do. We love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a tremendous Sunday. I hope that you were encouraged by that message from Pastor Terry today about how you and I can continue in our relationship with God by simply talking to Him, by having a relational conversation with Him every single day and multiple times a day. You know, he mentioned, and I would like to remind you to take this opportunity to text the word FOLLOWER to 77222. Each day, we're going to send you an encouragement, a verse and an idea or thought that you can think about throughout your day as you remember to hear from God and then pray to Him. Just have a conversation with Him. I'd also like to remind you that you have this opportunity to continue giving. Your faithful obedience has allowed us to meet so many needs in our community. And so we'd like to invite you to go to obbc.org slash give, or you can text the word OceanView to 77977, and you can give that way as well. I hope that you'll continue joining us each week as we walk through this series, as we continue to discover what's next in our relationship with God and with Jesus. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time.